All right. Uh, really, really happy to uh, have uh, a gentleman who I've been a fan of for a long, long time and loved his band. And um, he's joining us today on our iHeartRadio Canada. Uh, John Otto from Limp Bizkit. First of all, really nice to finally meet you. Um, I feel like I've known you forever because, you know, I've been following this band ever since uh, $3 Bill. I, I've been a fan. And you're one of those bands that in my book, you guys always get a pass that you can do no wrong because you guys bring it live. And you're a big part of that. You're, uh, you know, a lot of people will say you are the backbone of Limp Biscuit. So nice to chat with you and, uh, and really, really happy, happy yeah. to have you here today. Yeah. Great to be here. Uh, thank you for the kind words. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, you guys just dropped a new record. Uh, you did. And I loved how you dropped it because there had, it had nothing to do with you know, conventional ways of dropping a record, you know, you drop it on a Tuesday, you dropped it on Halloween. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it had a little bit of nod to do with uh, some of Fred's lyrics in there. So yeah, good spot to do it, you know? And it was, um, and it was really, really well received. Uh, I think fans were, it was unapologetic Limp Bizkit. And that's what I think a lot of people need now. They need just to, to go back to that time where things were fun because everything's been so freaking serious. Yeah, sure enough, man. And uh, there's a lot of trials and tribulations just getting through that album anyway. But uh, yeah, we're really pleased with it and, uh, um, as a band. And I think everybody really came with it. Um, you're, you're about to launch something really, really interesting. And, and this is what piqued my interest. And one, 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 many of the, one of the many reasons I wanted to talk to you today, but one of them was um, you're starting a drum school. And, um, yeah. and there's something nice about people that want to give back and that want to share, because as you know, in this business, um, a lot of people are, can be somewhat selfish and they don't want to give back, but you, you want to give back. Where does that come from? First of all? Well, I mean, I, I had the, the honor of uh, studying with a couple of great drummers growing up and um, used to cut lawns to get scrape up my drum lesson money and yeah. And, a lot of support from my parents obviously but uh but yeah a couple of great guys that uh Greg Kirkland he used to play for Ray Charles mm. took private lessons from him and another fellow named uh Jimmy Glenn Sr and this guy was an old school big band slash funk kind of guy and yeah. uh, he used to chain smoke Paul Mall cigarettes and slap my arms on a little practice pad kit and I'd be like, is this legal? Like, you know, but that was, you know, that was yeah. the 80s, like in the early 90s, where you could basically, I guess, do anything. Right, right. But, uh, um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, they were great. They were a great inspiration and helped to me in my young musical life. And uh, I just feel like, you know, it's time to to do that for some other people, you know. And, uh, and I've always wanted to kind of teach, but it can kind of either not had the time to do it or just yeah. kind of a little scared to dip my toe in there. But I think now it's the timing it feels good, especially after the quarantine kind of got my wheels turning about it. Well, and that's the common thread that I've heard throughout everybody's story that, it, that has been going through this. Cause let's face it, the entire world went through this together. It's the first time I think we've all gone through something together, no matter how much money you have, no matter how, wherever you're at in your life, we all went through this. And yeah. I think it, forced a lot of people to, to rethink things a bit. And so when you're saying that, it doesn't surprise me because um, you're, you're not the first person I spoke to have said, maybe I got to look at, you know, I got to look at what I'm doing with my time. And, and I think it's, yeah. it's super commendable because there's probably a lot of kids that would love to learn from you. Yeah. Well, and, well, and, and adults. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do mostly an emphasis on drum set. I will be trying to, you know, most styles and, um, and then a, definitely beginner to advanced concepts and then also do you know what i'm still putting together the curriculum there's a lot of stuff into it but uh that'll be launching in 2022 i'm really excited i'm also going to do some interactive events where you, know, you can stream in and watch me rip it a little bit and, right and, uh, you know we'll see how that goes too <laughs> and let's face it too i mean um one of the things I've, I have I loved about the 90s, um, and we kind of lost it heading into the new millennium, was the groove. Um, just, you know, bands sitting in a pocket. And I don't know if that's Pro Tools, uh, but, you know, there was a time when people did records, you had to get it right. Like, it wasn't fixing it with Beat yeah, Detective. Yeah. There was none of that. Mm -hmm. It was, it was you know, and you come from that that time, and you learn from people that had that 
So I think it yeah. might be really advantageous for young drummers to learn from someone who can hold a group, who knows about well, sitting in a pocket. And it's interesting you say that because that is, you know, I, I know, I know when you're younger as a drummer, musician, you a lot of emphasis on fills and stuff, but really it's all about solid groove and that's right. literally your job, you know? So yeah, I used to, I practice many, many days with the click track but it's also nice to like it's a live band we don't play to a click track no so, no you play to you yeah, <laughs> yeah so it, it's it's it feels more free and mm. you know we, we're able to coast up and coast down depending you know i just like believe there's an art in that somewhere yeah uh, and, you know, it's a lost and, art <laughs> i i agree i agree and i think maybe you you know you'll be able to give the opportunity for people to learn that again which is you know and 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 that's the thing like if the og guys don't do that then where's it going to go it's going to get lost so i think it's i think it's i think it's a great idea um it's funny because when you guys were coming up you know there was there was like the pillars of new metal there was you guys there was deftones there was corn and you know all those bands kind of splintered off in different directions um, yeah. and found their own places. But one thing about you guys was that was always undeniable is that Limp Bizkit killed it live. I mean, just killed yeah. it live. Uh, I got to see you for the first time at Heavy Montreal um, a few years back. And okay. I had never seen you in all the years. And, you know, I, I, I'd seen everybody. I, I lived in LA at one point, like I, I, but I never got to see Limp Bizkit. So to finally see you guys all these years later, it, it, you know, it could be, it could be a disaster when you see a band that you loved at their peak 20 years later, it wasn't <laughs> at all. And that's what got me. And then, so I'm just, I'm just, I guess I'm kind of grateful to see those three bands still doing it, still having the respect, still being at the top of their game, but being able to see you guys, um, you know, with a new record uh, and, and have, you know, have that integrity still live um, and then have it transcend into new music is, is really special. No, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, we're. Uh, I love the Corn Deftones. Those are those are all great friends of ours and uh, great musicians. And we've all been blessed to still be here and still be doing it. And um, you know, one thing, that, at least for my band, uh, we've always prided ourselves on. You know, always comes down to if you're not a live band, you know, it doesn't matter. You know yeah. what you do for the record. You know, you can't. It's so uh, that's something we take very seriously. And uh, work for it so i'm glad it shows um there's also something else you're working on which is a gaming channel um well i i am working on a gaming yeah. channel but it's going to be more of a play along casual kind of right. thing but you're like some people to, have taken that like oh you're going to be a streamer no no no, no but i mean but you but you're, but you're but you're passionate about gaming i i am i i it's a great i find it a great way to uh especially being on the road a lot and yeah. being a you know a, it's a great way to kill some time and have some fun in a positive way without, you know, being distracted as far as life's distractions for me at least. Anyway. Sure. So, I mean, and I've always been a big gamer ever since, you know, Atari. So, yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you think of um, like, I have, I have a 17 year old and a 14 year old and both of them okay. are into gaming. I Perfect. I'm 50. So for me, I, you know, I can get down on a button masher, but as soon as I started to get, you know, the, the underneath, the, oh man, it's just too much. I just don't have, I don't hey, know if I, my life, man. I don't underneath. know if I, yeah. Like, I don't know if I, if I don't have the dexterity or someone needs to sit, like, that's why I'm saying maybe I need a John Otto school and new, like, <laughs> you know what? Well, I'll, I'll throw that in, I'll throw that in there too. Bro. So what's the, what is it? Okay. Cause you know, my, my wife has, um, I got her the, the Nintendo. It's like the, the little, the reissue. No, no, the, the the old school ones, like the little the NES, like you know the little. You probably My have. My daughter one. made a Lego of it. This right. One that you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, so I've got the mini one that they put out. That was impossible to find. I got both of those, and oh, wow. I can get down on that thing easy. But as soon wow. as I get the, you know, it's just, and my kids are like, "You got a game." It's when you start moving around and the perspective and. I'm like, you know, you can move your, I'm just, I get, I can't, man, I got, I'm going to vomit. So how do I get, what do I, what do I need to play to get me out of that? Like, what's a good game for me? What's a good entrance? Like I, I can do Injustice, like, you know, the fighting games, like those I can okay, do. Mortal Kombat. Maybe. Right. Uh, I love that stuff. Cause it's, it's a bit 2d, but as soon as I get into it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, Call <laughs> of Duty is really, really popular for, for a lot of FPS. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm big into destiny is, is 
is really I've been with that game since 2014. But I do play Call of Duty and uh, and I've played Madden all my life. But that gets okay. that hits a weird competitive thing for me. So okay, and uh, I'm like, <laughs> it's a little too serious sometimes. So I kind of put that one right over to the right. But yeah, um, you know just button mapping those bottoms. You can get used to the underneath. You never have to take your fingers off of the uh, joysticks. You never okay. touch the top buttons. You only use the, so you're, it's, it's, it's really great. It took me a little bit to get used to them, but after that, it changed everything. So. Yeah. My, my, my son has a PS5. We were lucky. We found one, you know, in the first, oh, nice. we, were, we were really lucky. We went into like a, we went into a GameStop and, and we were just at the right time, right place, right time. Perfect. And, he's like he just zooms on that thing and i and i and it, i feel you know like he's always like sit down and game with me but i'm just so intimidated well you gotta get down there and i gotta die a little bit I, I know. And, you know maybe he'll start showing you some things you know um what, what's so you've got obviously with things um slowly starting to get better in the world i imagine there's some touring in the works for 2022 um yeah 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 um, i'm sure that there there, there are some stuff coming up. We're, we'll just have to see how everything shakes out. You know, the touring world is obviously turned upside down. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so we'll have to see what happens with that and what makes sense for us. So, so um, 2022, you've got, um, you've got the drum clinics and the drum stuff going full force. Um, you've got potentially some streaming stuff for gaming. Is there anything else that you're doing? Um, no, but yeah, I, that, I, that, that, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm just, I try to keep my doors, my schedule pretty loose just for for the band stuff, you know, right. because, uh, you know, obviously the band is number one in my life and all the rest of the guy's life. But, uh, you know, that's, a, you know, for how I want to do this stuff, I think that's that's it. And, and then also, you know, I have family as well and a daughter who's you know, a couple of daughters, but uh, one's in college and the other one's, in, uh, you know, flying through dance and all and acting and all kinds of other stuff. So, so you got a full plan. Know, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I got to commend you on, on, on dipping the toe in and getting the, the drum thing going. I think it's a great, I think it's a great initiative and I think a lot of kids need it. Um, and I, oh, yeah. I, and I hope it inspires other guys in your position and girls that, that, that could teach that craft because you know, it's like cooking, right? Like a lot of kids don't know how to cook because our parents cooked and their parents cooked. But just with every generation, it just gets watered down more. So you need people to show. You need teachers. So I think it's great, man. I think it's a. I think it's a. It's a commendable thing. Awesome. So um, and I'm and I appreciate you taking the time to chat about it today. And again, uh, still sucks is such a good record. <laughs> uh, thank you. Such beauty in the name. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it shows the tongue in cheek. You guys have always had it and you've never yeah. taken yourselves too seriously. And I think that's what makes you guys still cool and relevant that you don't, you know? Yeah. yeah you know, by short, we're all on this journey and, uh, you know, best thing is to be happy and healthy. Thanks for taking the time, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day.